Hello guys, I'm Ilya Laparev and welcome to another video where I'm going to cover the whole book of Studies of the Young Chess by Louis Fiar. In today's video we're going to cover number 9. If you like this content and if you love to learn new things about cello technique and basics, then consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these videos. And give it a like also, which helps a lot for me. All right, with this, we're ready to go. Traditional wise, I play the whole exercise through and then I'll tell you on what you need to pay attention. <laughs> So all right, we just have played the study number nine. So let's go step by step here. So what is written here in the exercise? Study for the bow. So obviously it's gonna be more for the right hand than the left hand. Although there are a couple of things that I can talk about also in the left hand. As I usually say, to kill two birds with one stone. All right, so we have a few uh, things written here. First of all, let's not get tricked. It's, um, B flat major, so we have the B flat and the E flat. For very, very beginners and even more advanced beginners, sometimes it gets confusing when you have uh, more signs like flats or sharps. So take a, uh, take a good look first, first slowly, uh, so that you analyze well, so that you don't play wrong notes. So this is important. Second thing, so under the first notes, of that exercise, we see letters, right? We see at the first note G. If you watch my previous videos, I explain what means G. G means in German ganzer Bogen, which means in, yeah, in English the whole length of the bow. So the first note would be whole length of the bow. So, right? Then the eighth notes afterwards, these ones, so SP. Is Spitz, I think, uh, which is um, at the top, at the point of the bow. So very short, um, not very short, very small bow. So of course, not this. It's just the tip of the bow. So we're gonna combine now the G and the SP here. The G SP now. Now G. See one more time. G SP. Here it means at the beginning of the bow, so, or I don't know how it's called. Uh, there is another name for it. I always use pr very primitive words like the end, the beginning, the top of the bow, the point of the bow, whatever. Anyway, I, I, I think you understand it. So the beginning of the bow, that means frog. Here. I wouldn't say too much here. Of course, this is one thing. Don't exaggerate. When it's a frog, don't play here also, because you're never going to be able to get a great sound. So I would say more or less over here. See? More here. So 
So let's do this one bar one more time, just so that it's clear for you. So G, ganze Bog, whole length of the bow, that's right. Now, Spitz. Now, Frog. See? And like this, the whole exercise continues. Is that clear? All right. So let's continue then. So what I would like to do next here in this exercise is to play only the quarter notes, at least the first two lines. I would like to do the quarter notes. So why is that? Because here in this exercise, bow distribution or bow division or bow management, it's quite important here. So let me show you what I mean with that. So I would like to play just the quarter notes. So here in this case, in the first two lines, it would be the first beat and the third beat. So actually the longer notes here. Let's go. Because the eighth notes, so the shorter notes, they're directioning, they're like the bridge going to the longer note. So it would be like this. Uh, see, I'm going doing a, a direction. So that's why I want to do first the longer notes. So in order also to have a good contact. you play because we have a little bit more time we do it slower and it's not such a fast exercise so we have the time to really control so we of course we sit with the bow on the on, on the string and we release prepare with the index finger you press a little bit not too much and release press release press release so then you play these notes so let me play then I Sing. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. So this is what you can. This is what you can do. So this is important. Then afterwards, you of course you play only the eighth uh, notes so that you get what uh, what's happening here. So. So this is again like the previous video, the number eight, I guess. So it's also this press release press. So we press. Release, press, release, press, release, press, release, press. And of course you help a little bit with uh, that part of the arm. But uh, not too much. No crazy movements, no artificial movements, just normal. It's mostly the control of the fingers. So this press, release. Same here. But maybe here we are going to... Uh, press less or not too much because or else we're gonna have these scratchy sounds We want our voice. We want still a clean beautiful sound So just a little bit much less than when we're on the top of the bow because when we're on the top of the bow We need a little bit more pressure coming more in front less, right? So So afterwards that you play the, a couple of times here at the spitz, so at the top of the bow and a couple of times here at the frog and go, then I think we're ready for the exercise. So let's give it a shot. So we play first step by step again, step number one, we do... Okay, fine. Now we play a little bit. So like this you practice 
this the whole thing, the whole exercise. Okay, now that we just have played a little bit of this exercise already, more in a form, more uh, with a structure, as I mentioned before, there is one thing is said for the left uh, uh, for the left hand. I mean, it's nothing new, it's uh, already repeated in previous videos, but here it's quite important also in some moments, uh, which is the anticipation of your left hand. So don't play. Uh, what do I mean with anticipation? So prepare in advance. Let me just take an example. For instance, in bar one from the third line, we have uh, a fifth interval here, which is quite annoying. I'm going to show you uh, this one. And this is going to really get impossible if you don't prepare in advance. Let's say if you are doing like this. I mean, okay, it worked, why? it worked fine because I'm used to it. But if somebody's not get used to it, it can really get tricky. So what do I suggest here? So first of all, double stops would be nice to do just to hear the intonation. today my fifth interval it's like this <laughs> yesterday it was like this anyway this changes from time to, from time, to time uh, okay so you do that with double stops just to hear the right intonation and uh, when you play I like to immediately hit the finger on the two strings so uh, jump so you don't need to do this you can do it of course and I guess most of you most of you guys would do that but I like already to bar the note bar the note means to put the no um, the finger already on the two strings all right so this is one example we have example uh, of this anticipation thing in the beginning right in the beginning so in the first bar because we have these finger extensions let's say so you see on the moment I play the F with the second finger, I'm already getting ready to press the first finger on the B flat. So let's take one more look slowly. Now ready. See? Ready. 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 Because or else it happens like this if you're not ready. Yeah, it's already unprecise. So it's very important that you are ready. And same thing here on the first bar on the second line. Ready and ready. 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 So see, analyze this. Take the score and you play it very slow because that's the very important thing to play slowly so that you're able to see everything and to hear everything and to analyze everything. So please, do me a favor and do that once because it's gonna save you a lot of time in the longer run. All right, so actually that's it for this exercise. We see there is one variation. Um, I mean, it's always useful to do the variation, but I mean, for this exercise, it's not really like, you know, a must, must, must do. But let's do just a couple of first bars. It's practically the same, it just goes a little bit faster. So we see the first variation is this. So again we see G, S, P, G, F, R. So exactly the same as the main exercise. Let's do this. for the number nine and this uh, is gonna be fine because it's just uh, faster instead of the eighth note is gonna turn 16th note so it's really no difference if you really train that very well that thing of the control with the finger and this pressing releasing but not pressing too much neither too relaxed a uh, good control firmly as I mentioned before in other videos then this is gonna be no problem at all for you so yeah, that's practically it for the exercise. It's not too difficult, but take a look. Anyway, take a look, as you would do it for everything. Even for the hard and for the simple things, take always a look to analyze, to observe it. All right, guys, so this was for today's lesson. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope this exercise is gonna like give you some progress about the contact of the right hand, especially with the fingers. So let me know in the comment section below or by email, or by message, like how it's going, how is the process going? Because we're almost reaching number ten, and I'm sure that well, we're a little bit already further away. So I'm sure there must be some progress in you. So I would be very, very, very glad uh, to, to, to hear or to see or to read that um, people are making progress with this because this is the most important that we all make progress and we all learn from each other. Again, thanks so much for watching and we'll see us next time with number 10, which is an exercise for the dotted notes. See you and enjoy your day. Bye.